80% of Rwandese are in agriculture. Poverty is mainly in agriculture and in the rural areas, so any financing channeled to the rural areas and to agriculture is the most important thing for this country. We try to reach out to the people, uh, make sure that there is access to financial service, not finance only, but financial service, close by in their communities. That is also which makes it quite a unique concept that we are trying to have these banks as local as possible. Someone had to believe that it can happen, and it happened. Rwanda, we used to have a big network of credit and saving cooperatives uh, called the Banco Popular de Rwanda. This network has been establishing itself since 75. These different credit and saving and credit cooperatives have been deeply affected by the vagaries of uh, the genocide as well. And uh, after 94, there have been some uh, government support to try to revive the network but uh, when uh, i was looking around what was happening really i realized that there was a very serious risk because the management of the whole network was extremely weak it were actually about 140 credit unions which had some form of a, an association a, a, a general top structure but nowhere integrated and they had no banking license hopefully at the time when I was thinking about what to do, Rabobank came in my office and uh, told me, you know, Governor, we think we can help you to restructure this network. <laughs> so I told them, you welcome. Uh, it's really a unique opportunity. I know Rabobank itself in Netherlands has been built on a cooperative movement of farmers, uh, exactly like our credit saving cooperatives. Uh, originated mainly from the rural areas, the cooperatives involved in farming. So that was the reason that there was a similarity between Rabobank and BPR. Apart from that, Rabobank wants to be uh, part and parcel of those parts of the world that can play a more important role in feeding the world food security. And that's the reason why Rabobank was looking for potential partnerships with banks in this part of the world, such as in Tanzania, Zambia, Mozambique and Rwanda. And with BPR, there was a great match. Uh, bank Populaire still needed a lot of momentum to get to the levels of a real retail bank. And that's what Rubber Bank is helping us achieve with uh, all the expertise it brings in transforming the bank into a fully fledged retail bank, but also consolidating on what the bank had achieved in terms of supporting agriculture in a more professional way. And so in six months time, actually, the uh all these unions were merged, but however they requested before implementation Rabobank to take a stake in this institution, then they would move ahead. So that's how it came about that we have now this institution which is a closed entity, however with very strong cooperative characteristics.
percentage, I believe around 15 or 16 percent has a bank account. And to make people bank is an important element for the growth of the economy. So access to finance is important for us, it's important for BPR and Rabobank. How is that executed? Well, first of all, by being in those local communities and by having presence in all valleys of Rwanda. And there we try to reach out to the people, uh, make sure that there is access to financial service, not finance only, but the financial service, close by in their communities. The bank to Maria nuko kubera imirima y'icyayi dufite iyo mirima y'icyayi tuyitangaho ingwate muri banke banke gaduha amafaranga yo kugira ngo tubashe gukora bimwe dukeneye ko kurihira abana amashuri kwivuza no gukora kubaka amazu no kugura amatungo kugira ngo tworore kora bo banke yadufashije guhugura nubundi abahinzi b'icyayi idufasha no guhugura abahinzi nabasoroni kugira ngo abashe kwitaho icyayi neze cooperative ko rinya buriba igameje guteza imbere ubuhinzi bw'umuceri iyo umuceri weze biratugora kubona uburyo twishyura abahinzi ikadusaba rero amafaranga kaba ni ngombwa ryo ko tubona banki dukorana kugira ngo icyo kibazo gikemwe Mam twa ba yabahinzi bakawa nuko twabonye ikihingwa cyakawa ari cyo kiberanye n'ubu butaka bwahanye Bese kiza cyo kujya muri cooperative nuko tugurisha ikawa yacu kugiciro kiza kandi nanone ndi kumwe nabanyamuryango muri cooperative tugenda twungurana ibitekerezo ibyo byonye ne biranshimisha kuko mbona ntigunze ntari ngenye Ever since Bank Popular turned to become a commercial bank it had members and the members turned to become shareholders but they meet frequently under what we call local advisory committees to air their views on how they think the bank should run its activities mutegeko rige umutegeko shingira agenga kope agenga banke populaire nuko tugo abanyamigabane bagomba kwitoramo komite igomba kubareberera inyungu zabo akwa nambu twitwa komite ihagarira inyungu z'abanyamigabane nuko uvuga ko tuba twaratowe impamvu nziza nyamukuru nuko dugomba guhagararira inyungu z'abanyamigabane tukaziremerera aho zabazi kugira ngo uteze banke bere the local advisory committees have regular meetings and they discuss what they think is good for the bank in terms of community banking. And this advice comes to the board and comes to the top management of BPR and in a way influences the decisions they take. The first couple of years there were some friction but now the bank is stabilized and I'm getting a positive feedback from the countryside about how people appreciate the performance of the Bank of Popular in terms of delivering a quality banking service to the citizen. I believe community banking is banking with the interests of the community in mind. So much as you bring in modern and state-of-the-art type of banking, you still have the community at heart. Uh, up to now, what is visible is a better structure of Bank Popular that should lead to better results in the very near future. What we are focusing on today is to try to provide people with easy solutions to bank, and we are doing that by using electronic channels. In terms of uh, helping people transact better with the bank or with uh, in their businesses, we've developed uh, automated systems to do basic banking services like doing purchases in their daily lives, doing money transfers to their colleagues or to their business partners, and we do this using mobile banking. <laughs> Eh, nkabasha 
no kuba nagura ko gakarita bitirewe bingoro and lately we've launched a new product called easy cash which helps bpr customers to send money to non bpr customers so for me to send my relative in the village money who does not necessarily have an account it is easy with easy cash because I will send them the money on their phone and they will use the codes that they've received in a message to go to BPR ATM and withdraw the money with no need for a card. So this is not only helping to transfer money but is helping the people who don't have accounts necessarily, thus increasing access to finance. Another element is ATMs. Uh, we roll out an, a network of over 100 ATMs in this country, also providing financial services to the people close to their communities. One thing we realized after uh, introducing mobile banking uh, services on the market is that people need more than just being informed about the product, but getting to know how it works by experiencing it for their first time. So we go to the markets, we go to the crowded places where people do their daily business and show them live how it works. People are also better able to manage their spendings and especially in countries like in Africa where they only get once or twice a year some cash in which they have to use for the remaining of the year including for some expenditure for the next harvest. It's very important that you give them the opportunity that they can manage that better than having the cash stacked at home. When the cash is burning in your pocket you tend to overspend. So even in that way it's also an educational tool as well and helps for people to manage better their family budget. in the agriculture sector in the last five years has been sustainably growing at a rate of higher than six, seven percent. But also the, the, the service industry, mainly the tourism. Rwanda is focusing on tourism because we think we have some potential which has not yet optimally exploited. The future of Rwanda I see in the context of the future of Africa. Africa was up to five years ago, you could say, recognized by most as the lost continent, and today I consider it as a continent of last opportunities. The basics for growth are there. The financial sector, as you see, is in a process of growing. The basic restructuring to create a stable banking system have now been completed, and uh, access to finance, access to credit, is getting easier, which uh, facilitate uh, the business as well. As Rwanda, what we are proud of is the visible achievements over the last few years that you could see on the streets, in the figures to do with how the economy is doing, socially how people's lives are being transformed. As, 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 as far as Rwanda is concerned, that is a big achievement. Rabobank added value. Rabobank brought things into this bank, but it will remain, it will always be, a Rwandese bank. You cannot come with a recipe. You can bring in some ingredients, but you have to make a recipe and a meal which is palatable locally. That's always the challenge, and that still makes it why it's still so much interested to do these things in different parts of the world. Mm -hmm.